Ah, uh, Melinda. So <laughs> there's this new game that's coming out and I really want to get it. Don't you already have a ton of games? I mean, I wouldn't say a ton, but I got, I got a few. Have you even played all of the games you have? Mm, she had a point. It seemed silly that I had all these games, but I've only played like 10 of them. So I made a deal to myself that before I buy another game, I'm going to play each and every one of these games. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Deniki. It's continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to create bots that do everything for you, to artificially make babies for your new colony, to boldly go where no man, woman, or non-binary has gone before. And who would have thought that could be so much fun? Autonauts was a very unique game to me. I've played simulators before, I've played time management games, but I've never seen one quite like this. The objective of the game is simple. You're sent to this new planet to colonize it. In order to do that, you need food and other amenities to be able to support life. And in order to do that, you need to gather ingredients and materials. And in order to get those, you need tools. So that's where you start. From a stick and a rock, you are expected to create this functioning colony. But here's where the game gets really cool in my opinion. You can gather enough materials to create a robot who will help you in your tasks. You build it, program it to do a task, and that's all it does until you tell it to stop or it runs out of energy. At first, it's just nice to have some help with cutting down trees while you collect materials or vice versa. However, this quickly becomes an obsession when you realize that literally any task you do can be done with a robot. And when I felt like I was doing something too often, I quickly resorted to building a robot for that task. Even if it was something as simple as, hey, pick up every acorn you find in this area and put it in this box. What is my purpose? You pick up acorns. Oh my God. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. It was a little scary sometimes. It kind of felt like I was playing God. Except these creations of mine actually listened to my commandments. However, much like God, I didn't really like how my first world was going, so I decided to restart. He's going to destroy the world. And after restarting, I felt a lot more comfortable with my plan on how I wanted to build this world. The obsession of creating tasks for myself only to build a robot to do the task for me continued to grow. It was fascinating to see a fully functioning and automated system, a perfect assembly of robots doing tasks tasks I set for them, and seeing my resources grow. And then it hit me. I was a f***ing slave master! Okay, okay, it's completely different. These are, in fact, automated machines and not actual people, so it's not like slavery. But even breaking out of that moral dilemma, I began to think about our own world. Part of the game includes raising incubated fetuses and creating human life on this newborn planet. Though that may sound weird to some, the part that really bothers me is that I designed robots to cook feed, and clean for these children. Even later in the game, I program robots to build homes for these individuals, and I even program a robot to repair that home. I programmed robots to generate enough food and build a completely sustainable living so that my people never go hungry or homeless. Free food, free housing, and free healthcare, all brought to you by technology. So yeah, I dodged the slavery issue from earlier, but now my dilemma was coming from thinking we may not be living in a proper future in our real world. Wasn't technology supposed to make our lives easier, and yet, why do we feel such a need to work our asses off? Why is it that even with technological advances, we still feel so reliant on money? None of my colonists need money, none of my colonists need jobs, and they're thriving! Why are we not on the Jetsons level of living if we're so damn technologically evolved? And why the f do I have a job in 2022? Why am I not in the future? What the f 
Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, the game was a ton of fun, minus the existential crisis I face as I see these colonists living a dream life as technology has truly served them and not the other way around. In all seriousness, this is a very unique game that serves as a great metaphor for what I believe coding must be like. I'm not at any mental capacity to understand coding whatsoever, but I imagine it's something like this, and I love playing a game that helps me understand a different perspective of how a group of people may see the world. Will I play this game again? You bet your ass I will. But more importantly, it allows me to tell my wife, yes, honey, I've played that game. Donuts, roll out. Check it out. Hey everyone, this concludes my A games, and I am now on to the B games. I'm really excited because that means I get to play the Batman games, the Bioshock games, the Borderland games. <laughs> Lots of games I've been excited about, but never got around to playing, so I'm super stoked as I continue this series. If you're interested in following me as I go down this list, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll also be creating some shorter follow-up videos on some games that I really enjoy playing, so look out for those videos in between my Steam library series. Steam, I don't really know what to call this series, but you, know, you, you get what I'm saying, this series particularly. Oh, hey bud. Hello. 